Hello everyone and welcome back to a new session with Mr. Abdul Wahab. This is the grammar course and today we're going to discuss a new grammar concept. But before I get to that, I just want to express my deep heartfelt thanks to everyone who's been uh, supporting this channel from the get-go. I want to thank all of the subscribers. The number is increasing. I know we're still just a humble small channel with barely a, uh, you know, barely 100 subscribers but uh, i feel that this channel is growing and hopefully one day it's gonna reach a very a wider audience and we're gonna help more people so thank you a lot for all of the support i want to thank all of my friends and uh the people who believe in this channel but without further ado let's just get to the point today we're gonna talk about the parallel structure or parallelism okay and I know that it's quite weird to talk about parallel stuff in English because we all know that what parallel lines are in math, which are two lines that never meet. They go line in line, but they never meet. Well, we have a similar concept in English where parallelism is when you are using a specific form or mode of expression and you do not want to break that pattern. Uh, so... In language, when you're using parallel structure, you're writing in a certain tense or, again, in a certain pattern. And the words or the tenses, they go line in line with each other and they don't cross or oppose each other in any way, shape or form. So basically, to keep it simple, this is an example sentence that exhibits parallel structure, okay? So writing with parallel structure, I'm going to... Increase the font size on this, okay? So, for example, I love um, watching movies, dancing, and singing. So, in this form of structure, you've got watching, dancing, and singing, okay? They are using or exhibiting the same tense throughout the whole sentence. That structure is not broken. Now, when you write without parallel structure, you get something like the following, okay? So, writing without parallelism or parallel structure, you get something like, I love watching movies, dancing, and to sing. In English, this causes a problem, okay, where the pattern uh, of writing is broken. Uh, and you want to avoid that. You want to avoid that to keep the tenses similar to each other, and you want to keep the pattern uh, going line in line uh, with the elements found inside it, okay? Uh, we, you could break the pattern in many different ways, and so the the best way to write, of course, is with parallelism. Uh, another example is when you're using a specific uh, tense, okay? So, for example, every day I go to school, study, do my homework, and meet up with some friends. Now, this is an example where you do have, okay parallelism of course okay because you're using the same tense throughout the whole thing okay so go study do and meet this is the present tense throughout the whole thing okay however you get problems when you write something like this every day I go to school studying did my homework and I'm meeting up with some friends now this is a disaster of course this is a disaster sentence this is an eyesore so you want to avoid any kind of pattern breaking whenever you're writing or editing uh, a text now I want to jump immediately to the practice samples just to give you a taste of what you're gonna come across on the SAT and what you should avoid, and of course by learning parallelism or the parallel structure, you could use this uh, in your writing, uh, writing exercises, uh, whether you, you're doing the IGs or the SATs or the APs or whatever. Uh, examiners really appreciate students who are able to um, appreciate and follow the parallel structure. So Rwandan conservationist. Edwin Sabuhoro is taking a new approach to wildlife poaching prevention, luring poachers away from crime by trained them to become farmers. 
Now, of course, here you could sense that there's something wrong with the verb here, and that's why it's underlined. You're supposed to change this. So he is using uh, or is taking a new approach to wildlife poaching prevention. Of course, you don't need to know anything about uh, wildlife poaching prevention. You just need to know a bit of grammar, which is by luring poachers away from crime by training them. So these two words need to go line in line with each other. Okay, we can't have one without the other. So I'm going to go for training because the other options uh, don't exhibit or don't show parallelism. And of course, we do need change. So we're going to check our answer and the answer would be correct. Number two, backpacking across Europe requires fortitude, stamina and being strong. Now, again, this you're breaking the pattern here. You, you're using a noun, fortitude, stamina. OK, another noun. Now, being strong here, you, you just you're breaking the pattern. You should, you should say and strength. OK, and strength, because this would go as a noun line in line with the pattern before it. So we do need change. Strong is an adjective. Stronger is another comparative adjective or is a comparative adjective. And we need a noun. So that's strength. OK. Jill was kind, thoughtful, and being considerate to her friends. Th this is a similar example, okay, where th they're, you're breaking the pattern, okay? Jill was kind, thoughtful, and considerate to her friends, okay? There's no need to say being considerate. Or, y or you, you would have to say Jill was being kind, being thoughtful, and being considerate. But that would be just wordy. So in English, we like to keep things short, okay? So con consider it. The fennec fox hunts at night, digs out dens in sand, and mate for life. Now here you can see he hunts, digs out, and mates, okay, for life, not mate. With the singular nouns, we add s to our verbs in the simple present tense, okay? So you do need an s there. Question number five, relaxing by the poolside and sip a glass of lemonade are two of my favorite things to do. Now, again, here you could immediately notice that there's something wrong with the sentence, so we definitely need change. Relaxing by the poolside and, again, we need to follow the pattern, okay? Sipping a glass of lemonade are two of my favorite things to do. So, we do need change. Sipped and to sip, those cause a structure which is not parallel, so we're not going to go with C or D. It has to be B, and so the answer is correct, okay? So... This is the parallel structure uh, in as simple as way as it gets. Now, we're going to go to another practice. I'm going to see when it gets harder what kinds of questions we could come across. So Sally aims to reach and retain 1 million users by the end of the year. Now here, I mean, you could clearly see Sally aims to reach. Here you have the base form of the verb reach, okay? Retain means to keep and again she's maintaining the same tense which is the base form of the verb there's nothing added to it there's nothing added to either of them so I don't find any problem with this kind of structure okay so I'm gonna go with no change because if I say retaining this will break the pattern same thing with retained or would retain so no change the warrior hoisted his ruby hilted sword will twirl it in the air and slew the ugly dragon so here again you have hoisted this is the verb in the past ed okay then you have slew at the end which is the past tense of slay okay but in the middle will twirl this is the future and again it's misplaced this is not the place to use the future because the whole sentence is being written in the past so we need twirled okay we need the past tense we do need change we're not using the simple present and we're not using the participle form of the verb or uh, we're not using the to twirl structure okay so twirled little red riding hood sauntered down the stairs will whip her cape and encountered the big bad wolves again sauntered encountered past tense will whip doesn't go in line with each other we need the past tense whipped to go in line with the other verbs and of course that would be the right answer to demonstrate his interest in the university of california los angeles sam visited the campus 
interviewed with the admission officers and has attended several classes. Again, here you have visited the simple past tense, interviewed, simple past tense, has attended, the present perfect. Uh, although there is an ED here, but this is a different tense when it is paired up with has, okay? So we need attended, but without the has. So this is what we're going to go for to keep the pattern, okay? If you check our answer, we get the correct answer. Finally, on his rafting trips through the Grand Canyon, Chase learned how to fish, building a fire, and repair a split in the raft. Of course, here, you could notice that there's something wrong with the sentence, okay? So on his rafting trip through the Grand Canyon, Chase learned how to fish, base form of the verb after to. He learned how to fish. This should be build a fire. So he learned how to fish, how to build a fire, because, I mean, if you delete what's in the middle, you can't say Chase learned how to building a fire, okay? So they're parallel, they're following to. So to fish, to build a fire, and repair a split in the raft okay so we're gonna go with d because we do need change fire building does not go in line with what's written before if we had learned fishing fire building and repairing a split in the raft, that would be fine okay the steps to build a fire that's just also um doesn't go in line with what's mentioned before so here it is correct answers all the way through we're going to exit this practice and we're going to even take it a step further. We're going to try the advanced uh, practice. So artist Bill Domonkos manipulates old fo photographs, alters video footage, and will superimpose GIFs or GIFs to cre create multimedia works of art. So again, here you have manipulates, which is the simple present. Alters, simple present. Will superimpose? No. Okay. So and superimposes. We need the simple present tense just like the words before it. So we're gonna go with superimposes because the other options do not maintain the pattern, they do not maintain parallelism, and we do need change. Check our answer, it's correct. The scouts arranged the logs into a TP shape, placed the newspaper kindling inside, and by lighting the match. Now here we have a clear um, breaking of uh, parallelism, okay, where you have they arranged, they placed, and lit the match, not by lighting or whatever this is, okay, this doesn't make any sense. So you need lit, which is the past tense of light, which is to put something on fire, of course. Uh, the witch created an evil scheme by, by disguising herself and enticing Snow White to eat the apple. So she created an evil scheme by disguising herself, disguising and enticing Snow White. Enticing and disguising, they go line in line. They exhibit parallel structure. So I don't find anything wrong with the sentence. There is nothing that I need to change. Because if I put enticed or enticed or having enticed, I'm changing the tense and I'm breaking the pattern. 500 new fairy tales were recently discovered in Germany, they have since been studied, preserved, and ar archived. So again, simple past, simple past, simple past, okay? Or have been, here you've got the passive uh, present perfect, and it goes line in line with all of the verbs before. So no change, again, because the pattern is preserved. The recent rise in popularity of fundraising sites like GoFundMe and Indiegogo Incorporation has led one New York Times writer to question whether our society is losing sight of the distinction between what we want and what we need. Again, here I could see that the pattern is maintained, what we want and what we need. I don't need any change here, okay? Because there is no breaking of the pattern. This doesn't affect anything that's written before it, okay? So you have a very long sentence, but this doesn't uh, oppose or interact or create any fissure in the sentence, okay? So this is quite fine, okay? It maintains parallelism with what we need, what we want. So that's it. That's skill level four. That's the whole um, 
lesson with parallelism i hope this was a very beneficial session for you uh stay tuned uh with our channel mr abdul Wahab's channel i'd also like to announce that we're starting or we have already started a new facebook page hermes test prep i'm gonna put the link down below in the description uh, section uh you should go to facebook and like and follow our page on facebook to stay tuned to the latest um, of our releases, video releases, we're also putting up exercises for people to solve and interact with. So you should take the chance to actually, and the time, to subscribe and try to benefit from that page as well. Thank you all for watching and see you soon with, with some more videos on Mr. Abdullah's channel and on Hermes Test Prep.